In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the Displacer Deformer. Now, this is a very versatile deformer, uh, and you can create a lot of interesting things, geometry, animations with it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is the three different examples we're going to be going over. This first one, you know, is more of just kind of how we can use it, not so much the result. Um, the other two, you can see we have some pretty interesting results, whether you're trying to create some terrain or perhaps, you know, an ocean or, or some other water. And I will say there are plugins that do this better. However, uh, you know, the Displacer Deformer is quite capable. And so wanted to go over it, make sure you know what you can do with it inside of Simno 4D and create these types of things without um plugins. Now, I should also mention, since this is a deformer, our geometry does need to have additional segments or edges since we are going to be deforming it, hence, you know, it being a deformer. Um, and it's going to do this based on whatever we plug into it, usually a black and white image texture or shader of some sort. Uh, and as we'll see, that can be an image, it can be a video, it can be something built into Cinema 4D. All right, now really the displacer is just changing the geometry based on that image, very similar to a displacement map, but instead of it happening in a material at render time, we are doing it directly to our geometry. Now you can find the displacer deformer in our deformers, it's right here, displacer, and we can add it to our plane. And with this first example, it's really just about showing how we can load in an image or video. Uh, like I said, the end result wasn't anything too crazy. Now the object tab here is where we control, say the strength and the height, and the type here can also um, be useful for um, getting it to look right on the different types of geometry you're using it, whether you want it to be centered or um, just based on the intensity self or some other kind of channels here. Uh, now, one of the issues with the Displacer Deformer is the UVW mapping or shape of your geometry. So the directions can help, the direction options can help fix that. Sometimes the normal tag as well um, can help, but you are somewhat, uh, uh, limited with how you can show it on your object, right? We don't have full texture mode, the, uh, the ability to change projection modes, that type of thing. And that's really where displacement mapping does have a bit of an advantage. So in the shading tab here is where we load in um, our image. And I want to point out, you do have some options here, but like I said, somewhat limited. You can't control the projection type, whether just um, you want it to offset or tile is essentially all you can do here. Though you can get a bit crazy um, because there is a Cinema 4D shader that does allow you to kind of rework it. It's not the easiest thing to see. And I should also point out that um, all of these shaders uh, are Cinema 4D based, okay? So they're the, the ones you would use with the standard and physical render, though you will see um, perhaps, you know, some Octane ones as well. I honestly haven't tried those. Um, but you know we have things like our layer and fusion, which can be really helpful on um, the different surfaces. I know a lot of those are cut off, but those can be very helpful. Um, honestly, anything you want to plug in here, you can. But let's just start by loading in an image. And I am just going to choose this Adobe video, right? Um, and this is what the video looks like. So, you know, just black and white, which I thought would work pretty well. Uh, the gradients maybe look, make this look not as great as I would have liked. Um, although it does get pretty crazy about, what is that, six seconds in, so perhaps I'll have to extend my preview range. But essentially, yeah, this is going to be driving our displacer. And so black areas aren't gonna move the geometry, um, white areas will push it up. And so that's kind of what we're going to be seeing here. Now, let me just extend this. But I also wanna point out if you do load in, uh, a movie file, sometimes MP4s don't work. Um, so just be cautious of that. But we do need to go into the animation tab. And it looks like it brought me here by default. But if it doesn't, um, what you can do is just go up a level, come back to our shader, click on it, and then switch to the animation tab, which um, you only see if you do load in in an image uh, sequence or a movie file. Now, um, it looks like all this stuff is set up. But if it doesn't come up with the start frame and end frame, you can just hit calculate or enter it in yourself in a few different modes as well. But I can go back up a level. It would be nice if this was eventually node based, um, but because it's you know regular Cinema 4D and not a redshift thing, um, that's pretty much why. So at this point, it's kind of doing everything we want it to do, right? It's just driving 
we're displacing our geometry based on the black and white values. And you can see we get something pretty interesting. Okay, and you know, this could be something from Adobe Stock, something you make in After Effects, and that's pretty much um, you know, all there is to it. And as I mentioned, the number of segments does affect this. So you can even get kind of a variety of different looks based on you know how many segments you have. And I already do have that uh, movie file loaded into a material so I can apply it, and then we can kind of get the best of both worlds here. Right, where we get the colors from the video file on top of the displaced um, geometry, and there you go. But to do more advanced things, right, other than a movie, um, that's where adding in noises, adding in the layer shader comes in. So I'm going to create another displacer deformer, add that to a cube this time, and remember this cube does have a bunch of segments, okay? Selecting it, I'm gonna go straight to the shading tab, and I'm gonna drop in, say, a noise, right? Very common thing to do, especially if you're gonna try and create a landscape, li water, liquid, um, some kind of organic, natural surface. And you can see that looks pretty interesting. And this is honestly the same noise that is in Redshift. So if you're familiar with that, then you know, it should be pretty um, straightforward here. But if you click on the noise itself, you can go into it. And we have all of our settings, most of which should be pretty similar if you've used the standard material, use the noise field or the max on noise in Redshift. Uh, the colors here, really black and white, your best option. All of our noise types here are available, right? Even the images, although I think that's cut off um, on the video. I think displaced turbulence is one of my favorites. And of course, we can adjust the scale here to make this pattern larger or smaller. And typically with the deformer, rather than trying to all the kind of smoothing in my geometry itself, I will put it in a subdivision surface to smooth this out um, after the fact. So that way, if my normals or shading look a bit rough, and actually looks pretty good there, but um, if I'm trying to push this a bit further, um, I can smooth it out. And we can show see that if we go into the object section here, where, as I mentioned, we do have the strength to kind of push this further and you can see the shading, the Fong shading starts to break. Um, not that I would want to do something like this, but then you can smooth it out after and um, all that shading, most of the shading issues appear to be fixed that we do have some geometry issues because this does get applied to both the top and bottom. Now, one thing you can do to kind of help with that is switch this from centered um, to intensity, and then it really kind of does the top and the bottom, right? Intensity centered essentially makes gray um, not move at all, and black goes down, white goes up, uh, whereas uh, intensity it seems like it just ignores the uh, black and just uses the brighter values to push out, okay? Another way you can kind of control this to get it to work on just a part of the object is with fields. So whether that's a spherical field, right? Can create a spherical field here. Oops, not what I meant to grab, something like this. Uh, you can see how we're able to control the strength of this displacer using this field. And what's nice is you can use multiple displacers. So you could come in here and use multiple fields to kind of build up and, um, you know, make your geometry however you would like. The order does matter here. It can influence the end result. We're not really seeing that here, but do keep that in mind. Okay, so let's create something a little bit more interesting, though this isn't that bad. I'm gonna get rid of my field for now. And I'm gonna go back to the shading tab here because when it comes to creating more advanced uh, looks or more detailed surfaces or geometry with this, that's where the layer shader comes in handy. The fusion is also helpful. Filter can be as well, but the layer filter, or I'm sorry, shader here, okay, I've added it, really doesn't look like anything's changed visually. Um, really the only thing here is that's got, an, got added to our shader in our displacer deformer, but um, if we go into the layer shader by clicking on it, we'll see our noise listed here. And this layer shader works very much like layers in Photoshop, probably seen it before uh, in some capacity or uh, maybe worked in Photoshop, so we have different blending modes as well as opacity. So 
you can then go into whatever textures, shaders, images you've loaded here by clicking on the little icon. And now I can come in here, adjust the scale, the strength, and maybe we'll start with something kind of large like this. And displace turbulence is one of my favorites, as well as gaseous, right? That just gives this a very kind of landscapey look. Now, once I'm done or wanna go up, I will hit this up arrow. And yeah, I control the strength here, though I don't necessarily recommend that um, because that's on the individual layer. Instead, in the object section, um, adjusting the strength here or perhaps the overall height is going to be your best bet. All right, for global overall changes. Now, because I do want this to only affect maybe the top, um, what I can do is create, say, a box field. So that's what I'm looking for right there. Go into, say, a side view front view perhaps, move this to our cube, scale it up just a touch so it's bigger. And I really wanted to shrink this so that it fits on or surrounds the top. So I'm gonna do that and then also take the inner offset amount all the way up. And so that's gonna give us something just on the top like this, right? So that's kind of cool. And you can see we're on our way to creating something that looks pretty natural from a landscape point of view. Um, and we haven't even done too much here in our uh, shader um, list in the, the layer shader. So I like to combine different noises with this and you can copy and paste noises, All right, copy and then paste. You can just come back here and add another noise. So we could do that. And we're back to kind of that default noise, you can see how bad it looks in comparison. So I'll come back in here, um, switch the noise to, to displacement, maybe gaseous again, um, and adjust the scale. Maybe with this one, we make it really small, right? You can see you get too small, you start to run into some geometry issues. Uh, and if I'm not happy with the way this looks, I'm not terribly concerned because I haven't started working with my blending modes or my opacity. And so if I just wanna add some of this little detail on top of what we had previously, you can see I can do something like that. Helps just break it up a little bit more. Um, if we wanna work with our blending modes, oops, turn that off and switch it to multiply as well. And you can also adjust the opacity here, right? So it's really just working with these different noises, um, the different blending modes and opacities. I wanna go into those just a little bit more, but if you're familiar with blending modes, then um, you know should make decent amount of sense already. So in this case, maybe um, our displace turbulence look good. You know, multiply, add. Those can be really good, especially when you lower the blending mode a bit as well. So that's looking kind of cool, all right? Um, but what happens if we add, say, a gradient? This is a great way to experiment with blending modes. So you can see what the gradient is doing Okay, um, where it's causing this to go down, all right? Um, and we can use this gradient with these blending modes to apply it in different ways. So if I hit multiply, notice how um, it's going down this way. It's keeping those darker values, which is a little bit backwards from what we're seeing here. So we're getting this to slope. Um, if I was to do add, I would get the opposite effect, okay? Um, where uh, it's not going down, but instead, uh, we only see the noise come through in those darker areas. So once again, just other ways you can break this up. You can change kind of the level or shape of your, um, you know, surface, your landscape, whatever. You know, don't forget, we also do have the landscape um, object here. Uh, but, you know, I do find this a little bit more fun um, and better in certain circumstances. You could even come in here and switch the type to, say, circular. And so you can see how we're getting that just in the middle, all right? Maybe we switch our, men, our blending mode back. So you can see how it's kind of depressing everything um, and work with it, you know, this way to once again, kind of change the overall shape. And the, once again, the order does matter here. So maybe we want that gradient at the beginning, kind of change the shape, right? Before adding our noise, and our noise on top. And it, because that one's set to normal, right? 
it's not doing a whole lot. So we have an add already. So let's do a multiply. There we go. And so we're able to get some really interesting shapes, some changes to our geometry. And um, we can still add fields here, right? Like I've talked about as well as multiple um, displacers. So, you know, that's kind of interesting. Why don't we use a spherical field on this one? It's using all the same layers. I'm just kind of doubling up what we had, but you can see kind of controlling this, able to get something kind of interesting, can work with our inner offset, kind of get that plateau. And back in here, maybe I work with um, our shapes a little bit to get something that looks a little bit different. I'm just working with the blending modes here. I'm sorry, the opacity, um, but of course I can work with the blending modes as well, as well as go in and just make changes to these noise individually to get something that looks good. All right, so that's essentially the process we saw for the first example um, to get some of that, oops, you know, area in the middle higher was to kind of combine these together. Um, the last thing I'll say about this example is because this is you know black and white, essentially pushing things up or down, um, this, those parts that are kind of stretched up, there's only so much we can do with those. And so that's where maybe using a bump map and a material can help kind of make that look a little bit more natural. All right, so let's move on to water. Now, um, water, right, is pretty much the same technique we used for the landscape there, um, but, animated, All right? So I'm gonna create another displacer, drop that onto my cube and add in a noise, All right? Come in here, switch the noise to displace turbulence or gaseous. Like I said, those are kind of my favorites, but um, you know, really just depends, kind of go nice and large with this. And you know, how large we set the scale really de helps um, define the, the scale of this water, how much water, how close we are to it. So maybe something like that looks pretty good. And a part of this we haven't taken a look at is the fact that we do have this animation speed here. So I can add a little bit of speed. And now what I, when I hit play, right, our, our noise is animating, it's changing. Honestly, that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so could you come in, use a layer shader and, you know, try to take this further? You absolutely can, we'll give it a shot. Um, I'm not sure how much more we're going to be able to improve on that, but we can certainly try. Maybe we do gaseous or displaced turbulence this time. Maybe make it really small. I do think that's a good kind of technique to um, do one large, one small. Maybe just turn that down. Then put this in a subdivision surface to smooth it out. Um, and you can see that still looks pretty lumpy now. Um, so back in our layer, maybe we'll just switch the blending mode here to overlay. Maybe just take that down a bit more. Now this um, smaller noise is not animated. So we could maybe try to do a little bit there. I do want to point out this um, animation has slowed down significantly. Okay. But overall, that's looking pretty good. Actually a lot better than I was expecting. Another thing I will occasionally do here. All right, and I could use the same kind of field technique um, to make it only affect the top, all right, um, would be to add the oops, wind deformer to give some more defined waves. So I can do wind, I can drop that in here. Let's just turn off our displacer. Uh, I'm gonna turn off flag to start with this. That will help a lot. You can see it's moving it left and right. We want it to go vertical up and down. So I'll take our displacer and just kind of rotate it. 90 degrees. Okay, I'm sorry, not displacer, the wind deformer. There we go. All right, so that's looking okay. You can start to turn down the amplitude a lot. We don't want it to be too large, something like that. The size of the waves we can turn down as well to get more of them. I'm gonna turn off that subdivision surface here though. So, okay, that's looking pretty wavy. And once again, we can use this to kind of help define the scale of these waves. And as things look pretty big, maybe I'll just do something like that. Frequency, right? 
I'm honestly not seeing that do a whole lot in this particular case. I would have thought it was speed. And maybe that's what it is. What I would have expected it to be. Yeah, there we go. Speed. Turbulence can help break things up a little bit more. And then how many we want vertically versus horizontally. Right? So maybe we just want something like that. And that looks very repetitive, not very organic or natural. But when we combine that with our displacer, well, that's where things can get broken up. Right? To get some more waves. Okay? And that's kind of it for making some water here. The last thing I want to go over really quickly are the materials. Now, I'm not, not going to do a full breakdown on these. Um, I actually really like the way this one came out. But let's start with the water because it's a bit simpler. So our water here, right, really no different than any water. water. Um, but I just used a color node to control um, the overall color. It's in base color. I really don't think it needs to be, but just to be safe, I added in there. Uh, the transmission is what's doing a lot of this here. And I plugged that color node into the transmission color. That's doing a lot of work. And I also plugged it into the scatter color. Now, um, the depth is what's controlling that. And you can see with a depth of zero, we get you know crystal clear, almost pool water, which is great if that's what you want. But for more ocean, lake, you know, larger bodies of water, you really can't see very far down. And one way to kind of get that effect is to adjust the depth. And you can see as I turn that up, we really quickly um, start to get something, you know, that we really don't see through. And it's kind of a nice little effect how the edges are a bit brighter because um, light is traveling further through those. So that's pretty much all there was oops, to that material. Okay. Now, um, the ice material, I could have spent hours um, adjusting this material, making it look a lot better. I still think it has a long way to go. Um, but it really starts with this ramp, right? This ramp is plugged into everything. Um, and this is where the color is coming from, the dark blue to light blue to white. And I switched the mapping here to um, flat. And so that way the gradient is going vertically up the side. And so that's why, um, you know, it gets darker and lighter. And I moved the knot here around to get the, the water color there. Um, I have a noise being plugged in to um, a bump, and that's being mixed with our gradient so that more of the noise gets added to the brighter snow area um, than the water, right? So where the gradient is darker, we get less of the, the noise. Where it's wider, we get more. That's why it's being plugged into the mixed amount, and I'm using a color correct to kind of control that, um, you know, so I have that going there. Similar type of thing for the roughness. Okay, I have our ramp going in there along with a noise to kind of add some roughness. Um, and just, well, actually I didn't adjust it at all, uh, the mix amount. Um, using that to kind of control um, how much of the noise we get versus the ramp. Um, to help add a little bit more irregularity to the roughness. And I really only want that... Um, on the snow. I wouldn't want that on the water. Um, and that I think is pretty much it, right? Um, little bit of transmission here just to kind of make things transparent ish, you know, especially the snow. All right. Um, I'm using the ramp to drive the transmission color. And since the snow is brighter, it's getting more transmission where the, the water or liquid or darker ice, so to speak, is getting um, less transmission or is less transparent. And um, I do have the depth set very high as well um, to avoid kind of that same thing where uh, we get too much transparency here. It looks too glass-like. You can see here because of the transmission color, I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, and turning that up just makes this oops look a little bit more solid. And so I think that's about all there is to this material. Like I said, I could spend a whole bunch more time refining this and getting it to where it really needs to be. But in the end, I do think it came out very interesting. And so that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. If you could also like this video as well as subscribe to my channel if you found the video helpful, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.